Hey guys, today I'm here with Nelson Kwan to talk you through his top five tips for taking photos of a total solar eclipse. So you've probably heard of storm chasers and that kind of thing, but I only just found out today that there's people such as Nelson who are solar eclipse chasers. So first of all, do you want to tell us a bit about what that is exactly for people who don't know? I don't think I've ever seen a total solar eclipse as you describe it. Well, many people, they've seen uh, eclipses uh, in some sense, mostly in textbooks actually. And uh, a total solar eclipse basically is uh, when the moon blocks the sun. And essentially what happens during that time is the sky gets really, really dark and uh, the sun is completely blacked out and you'll, you'll see what the atmosphere of the sun, which is what they call the corona, which is like this bright uh, white-ish ring uh, around it. And it's, it's one of the most spectacular things you'll ever see in your life. Uh, it lasts only a few minutes, uh, sometimes seconds. Uh, and the longest uh, happened actually was a couple of years ago in 2009. Uh, and it passed right over Shanghai. La that lasted a maximum of uh, over six minutes. Okay, nice yeah. one. So there's people who are right into photographing and videoing this who chase it to different countries where they're going to get the best vantage point. Mm -hmm. And Nelson's actually made a film on it, but they're talking it through and hearing how the variables change so quickly and knowing that a lot of you are into general astrophotography and this kind of eclipse photography, I thought it'd be worth sharing his tips gained from years of shooting this kind of thing. So we've boiled it down to five. So first one being planning and scouting. So mm -hmm. you recently did a trip to Ethiopia, which you made a film on. So how did you plan that out? Or that may be a bit complex for people. If you're going to shoot an eclipse generally, you know, what do you go in, what's involved? Well, the main thing is eclipses don't happen all the time. Mm. They happen on average about one and a half times, uh, or one and a half years. Uh, in, okay, in so every 18 months. months, yeah. Every 18 months, yeah. So the main thing is it's understanding when the next solar eclipse happens and when the eclipse season happens. Uh, just a little background about solar eclipses, why we don't always see solar eclipses is basically, uh, <clears throat> what happens is the moon has to cover up the sun. But a lot of times, uh, and actually this only happens twice a year, is that uh, the reason is because the Earth and the Sun, let's say they lie on the same plane, the Moon actually is offset by about 5 degrees. So every month, uh, the Moon is either going, if this was the Sun, the Moon literally goes over it or under it, uh -huh. like that. And that's why we don't get solar eclipses all the time, or lunar eclipses. Okay. So what, what happens is you have to first know where, uh, well, first of all, astronomers nowadays have really predicted to the finite pinpoint exact second and to the exact location on earth uh, when the moon casts its shadow over the earth. So that's more than a, what was that band? I'm being chased by a moon shadow, moon shadow, moon shadow. Anyway, um, <laughs> so you do actually see a ring of shadow trail across the earth, which yes. is the, the moon blocking out the sun. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, so you need to, that info is fairly easy to find online that's and then it's just a matter of yeah. finding out where the next one's going to be and how you're going to get to the exact right place. Yeah. Okay, so hopefully some places are a little bit easier than southern Ethiopia. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> okay, so second one is exposure because obviously as if you're pointing a camera up at the sun as something's passing in front of it, the exposure is going to vary wildly, but how much does it exactly in terms of exposure and how fast is that all happening? Um, the exposure uh, between the sun to when it's like not eclipsed all the way to when it's at totality and totality is when the moon completely blocks the sun, uh, it's, it varies greatly. It's almost as much as between night to day. Um, and I estimate maybe it's about between eight to 10 stops of a difference. So keep in mind when we're talking stops, that doesn't mean it's eight to 10 times brighter. Eight stops is 256 times brighter. Nine stops is 512, and then 10 stops is over a thousand times difference in exposure. So you're gonna be really toggling through those dials to mm -hmm. handle that lack of light. Right. Um, just to give you a couple settings, uh, you can actually look at these settings online. In fact, a lot of eclipse photographers, what they've done is they've actually taken those pictures and then they leave their settings on their pictures and they actually yeah. tell you what they are. Uh, you can probably look those up online. They have di various different kinds. Uh, the ones that I, I, I like to try to go for is uh, it's an ISO 800, uh, 125, and an F2. 1 over 125 right. and f2 to 2.8 right that's for yep. when it's blacked out Completely during blacked the out. totality and then you can kind of do the math from there to figure out where you want to go from when the to sun get is 10 stops down 
exactly. Yeah. Okay. Anything in terms of minimum shutter speed? Is it moving fast enough that if you're shooting at one sixtieth of a second, you're likely to get blur, or it doesn't move that quickly? Uh, well, when it gets that dark, uh, you want to you want to have your camera on a tripod, and you want to have it pointed at the sun. And the main thing, main reason for that is if you're you know clicking at it and you've got a lower shutter speed, it's going to be you're going to be so excited about the solar eclipse that you're, you're probably going to have camera shape. And the thing you were saying, all the great images, they are bracketed and composited, right? You can't get exactly. a shot that will handle that dynamic range. Exactly. Um, any of those great eclipse photography uh, photos that you see of just the eclipse with those fantastic rings around it or whatnot, those are all uh, guarantee are, are comp uh composited with yep, yep. bracketed and everything. Okay, so what about gear? For those kind of shots just of the sun, I've had friends shoot shots of the moon and they were four, five or six hundred mil. What sort of length were you guys shooting with in Ethiopia? Um, in Ethiopia, well, I, I was shooting with a friend of mine, Jeff Sims, and he's he's the guy that was uh, steerheading the, this project. Um, he had 15, over 15 cameras uh, that we were shooting, most of them shooting time lapses, but in the beginning, when he first started, and this is what most people would probably want to do, is uh, he shoots uh, with a 500 millimeter lens, and he uses a, um, what is that one with the lens with the mirror in the back? A mirror lens? Yeah, a mirror lens. Yep. Okay. So Jeff uses a mirror lens, it's a 500 millimeter, and uh, I forgot what, what model make he has, yeah. it's a 500 millimeter, and that basically, on a full frame camera, it will basically encompass the entire frame. Okay. Uh, so he shoots that as the close up so that he gets all his coronas and everything with that. And then he shoots with a 14 millimeter uh, to get the wide shot of everything, which is pretty neat when a solar eclipse happens. Basically, the, the moon's shadow literally races across the sky, and you can actually see it happen. Mm. And so we actually, he catches that all um, together with it, the landscape, the everything. Mm. Um, so he uses a, an ultra-wide, and then he uses a, a telephoto. But anywhere in between, you can even use, uh, as long as you can try to hit those those uh, exposure values and you can probably get close to that. So on your actual trip, how many cameras were you traveling with altogether? Uh, we traveled with 15 cameras. Yeah. Okay, that's a lot of data. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we were, there were a bunch of small cameras, I think it was like three or four GoPros, uh, and then we had a couple of the smaller cameras, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, point and sh some point and shooters, and then uh, we had one that, that was a 200 mil, one was a 500, one was four, on a 14, and one was on a 24. I mean, it was, it was okay. all over the place. <laughs> uh -huh. So how long did you, I guess this kind of throws back to the first one and uh, your planning, but how long did you give yourself at the location where you're planning to shoot to work out where you want all the cameras? You know, how many days early did you arrive? Um, Jeff had this planned out. He's been doing this for 10 years. Uh, and I just modeled after him, but what he does is he actually, uh, he'll plan out the shoot almost three, four, five months in advance. This upcoming solar eclipse, uh, which will take place in the Faroe Islands, we're already in planning stages and we're more than a year out. Uh -huh. uh, actually, just a little under a year out. Um, the main thing, is, and he's actually gone to the location. I mean, the key thing is you got to go to the actual location and then sit there a day or two before, watch where the sun is at that time of day when the eclipse will happen, and then really just plan out, like take your camera, take a couple test shots and actually see where you want your composition to be and uh -huh. that's i think that's the key thing okay so two days would be good one day at two least day, yes uh, uh, one day at least if you just go there on the day of it's it's you're really winging at that point so when i was growing up they always said wear the funny little glasses when there's an eclipse so you don't hurt your eyes do you have to do anything like that or anything to protect your camera sensor uh actually yes you do um you, you wear those things to protect your eyes because obviously if you look at the sun directly it's not good for you you're going to go blind and may, mostly because of the UV light and the intensity of it's just extremely strong. Um, there are uh, a lot of eclipse chasers, they'll put uh, what they call solar filters. And these are the same kind of solar filters you can buy and, and put onto telescopes uh -huh. that they use to actually look at the sun. And when you put those filters on, you can actually, when you look at the sun through the camera lens, it, it'll be safe for you to look through if you're on a DSLR because that, okay. that that light is literally ref, uh, reflecting off the mirrors, right, into your yeah. eyes. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be safe for viewing. Uh, at the same time, it'll be kind of neat. You'll even see uh, maybe solar prominences or even like sunspots that are actually on the sun. Okay. Once you put that filter on. Nice one. And your last tip was about how to actually enjoy it. Yeah. Um, if you're trying to shoot a solar eclipse, you don't want to just go there and, and just shoot the eclipse. I would really recommend you uh, take your first eclipse and don't, I mean, you bring cameras and, and try your best to get the best shot, but don't let that be your primary objective. Let your first solar, solar eclipse be 
a time where you can just really experience this wonderful natural phenomenon that happens. There will always be other solar eclipses, and uh, that first one will always be the most memorable one. Nice. Okay, well, thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, like I said, until today, I didn't know there were people who chased solar eclipses, and I didn't really know what they were. I've seen the cool picture. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that terrible beer was named after the, the corona, but there you go. If you have any other video requests, please throw them in the caption below. Uh, please do click to like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Hey everyone, I actually filmed that with Nelson back in Beijing in 2013, but after their trip to Ethiopia in 2013, they've just now gotten back from Svalbard in the Arctic, shooting the second installment, and their project is now up on Kickstarter to get the, fil the film they're making across the line. Jump over to the link that's in the caption below if you want to see more of their work, how they go about it, and support their campaign to get the movie up. Cheers, guys. And yeah, we'll see you soon. If you have any more requests for videos you'd like to see, fire away below. And uh, please click to lick. Click to lick. <laughs> <laughs> lick. Oh, <laughs> uh, fuck it. Okay. If you have any.